Yeah, bang, bang, well, uh, prisons, yeah. Uh, the dangerous, dangers in prison as a, as a boy, as a man, yeah. When I first started my, my prison sentences, um, I was in Ashford, in my own prison, and what, 63, 64. That's a joke, isn't it? I was a young kid in, in the young part of it, yeah. But when I was there, um, used to get metal trays with a metal bowl, metal knife, metal fork, metal spoon, yeah? And a plastic cup, a small plastic cup. That is, that is what, it would be, that belonged to you, yeah? The only thing you never washed up was the tray. They washed the trays up, everything else was yours. You can imagine, you've got a metal knife with a little blade, which is about an inch, right? A long handle and about an inch blade, a fork, and a spoon. You can imagine the spoon can be used as a tool, the fork can be used as a tool, and a knife, right? <laughs> I'm telling you straight, this is how, I mean, there might be someone on, on, on my YouTube that remember this, right? what prison would like in my days. So in, when I was in, in Ashford, my own prison, I see so many people, right? So many people get cut and stabbed as a kid it, with these knives and forks and spoons where they sharpen them up and they stab people. It's only later on, in, later on, I think in the, in the uh, late 70s, that they started to change it to plastic bowls, plastic knives, forks and spoons, yeah? And the bowls, everything was, was plastic, barring the, the metal tray. The metal tray was still a weapon because in my, in my Owlsbury YP, there was a, a screw called, uh, called I think it was called Hooper. Hooper, yeah, he, used to, he was a PCI that made you just, just to do bunny ops. And I remember him coming into the gym. Someone has told me on a comment before. I remember him coming to the gym when I was a kid. And, uh, sorry, not coming into the gym, coming, coming into the, to, to the uh, mess hall, the big mess hall we had, yeah. Coming in there and starting bullying and starting to bully people to get them to bunny up round, round, round it, yeah? I remember some kids getting hold of them, loads of them, 30, 40 of them, all steaming into the screws that was on there at the time. They took him, bent, put him over the t one of these two big tables that were about four, three or four inches thick, yeah? Put him over the table and smashed his leg with his legs, ankles, all round there with metal trays to let him know, you know, they ain't gonna stand for it no more. He retired after that, yeah? But they smashed his, I mean, whatever happened to the boys that did it, I don't know, I've never, I've not read nothing about it, but what happened to the boys, I don't know. Uh, um, but someone has sent me a, a comment saying that he was one of the ones that, that done Hooper, or Cooper. You know, he was a bad, bad man, but, we all, everyone in them days had the metal knife, the metal fork, the metal spoon. So you can imagine what was going on in there. A lot of people were getting stabbed up, cut, yeah? And then I moved on from, from my, from, from my uh, Ashford, with my own prison. I moved to the scrubs as, as a, a bolster boy. Got into the bolster wing. Bolster wings, are one of the worst places that you could ever be. It's a lesson that you learn, Borstal. It's a uh, regimental bit in my times. The screws had a black, black uniforms. Black uniforms, yeah. Black caps. Blue shirts. Dark blue shirts. One of the big black ties. And they were no good, mate. And they was all ex-MPs. They didn't give a monkeys for anybody. They would bash you up just looking at you, mate, for nothing. They would smash you to pieces. In them days, the screws in them days were really, really bad. They didn't care. They didn't care what they did, who they hurt. But most bolster boys, the ones the ones that bolster recalls, that bump into Portland, been to Rochester, been to this, down, that one, that been to all sorts of bolsters, and they're coming back for a recall, yeah? Usually, these calls you go to watch the ball store 
or, or I think it's Rochester, or what's the other one? Anyway, Ballstool boys, right, I've got a thing about melting, melting uh, toothbrushes and splitting the, uh, a razor blade in half and sticking it in the end of the of the uh, of the razor of the of the uh, toothbrush and. Uh, two two razors sticking out of one of uh, the toothbrush, but little blades, little bits like that, and cutting your ass, really cutting your your ass or cutting your face, giving you two big cuts down in the air that are very hard to stitch up. Yeah, two big cut whoop down the face, and Bolster boys are well known for that. In my Bolster, Portland Bolster, it was well known for that. They was cutting you like bad. And ball stools, ball stools had, had the metal knife, the metal fork, the metal spoon. But in my ball stool, you, you had to give it in. Every time that you had your food, you give it in. You clean it, you give it in. You clean it, you give it in. And then they come around, they give you give you your knife and fork, they put it in some sort of a sheet thing, and they give you it, yeah? But there's still people that can get hold of them, yeah? They get hold of them and they sharpen them up. You can imagine the knife's about that long and they sharpen the edge up with the blades about that long and they sharpen it up and it's like a proper tool. It's a proper tool. I've seen them do the spoons. I've seen them sharpen. Me, I'm not into weapons yet. That is, it wasn't my game. And you see these boys in there, mate. Oh, the boys that have done plenty of plenty of ball stools. They've done book and they do recalls. They come in back, watch the recall. They're doing watch the ball stools, one of the worst ones. And they're coming back to Portland, Portland was bad then, yeah. But even Portland wasn't as bad as Rochester. But we think sometimes you get the boys come back to Portland for the lessons to teach them a really good lesson, yeah. And the screws in there are by a bad. They're all bad, mate. They just want to hurt you, hurt you, hurt you. So in my ball stool, um, I've seen them soap, do the soap, put the blades in the soap, cut people with a with a with a, with a, with a soap with the blades in, cut them bad. I've seen chair, bed, bed legs, and all that really used as weapons. Ballstool was bad, but when I was in my YP, my YP was when I was in the scrubs. I've had a few fights with a fist, but it's still the same there. It was still metal, metal bowl, metal tray, metal knife, metal fork, metal spoon, right? And you had to give it in, and sometimes you didn't. I just said you have it for, let you have it and pick it up later on. I've seen so many people in there, right, get stabbed up, get stabbed up really, really bad with these metal knives. As I told you, the blade's only tiny, but it's the the length of it gives them. And I think about not in the seventies, in the seventies, they started to phase it out the metal knife, fork, and spoon. Just phase it out and the metal bowl, yeah. Now and again, you see the metal bowls in in uh, prison in in the uh, in the mix. You see the metal bowl, but not very often. But they're antiques, really, because they started off in the ballstool wings, and in actual remand prisons, and all remand places were little bowls, little metal bowls, yeah, because everything's plastic now. But people still, but anyway. So when I moved to my YP Owlsbury YP, right. Um, when I moved there, uh, the, the weapons in there was crazy. They used to make weapons, you know, if, in, the, in the laundry, you had Alan Pounty there. I mean, they, he got sent to Parkhurst with the craze and they ruined him. They ruined him. Uh, I think it was Reggie that ruined, uh, that ruined uh, uh, young Alan. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking, well, I think think he went to Parkhurst and then went to Broadmoor. They ruined him, yeah? They absolutely ruined that kid. But when I was at Owlsbury with him, his weapon was a was a, a, a safety pin. They used to have these big safety pins, long safety pins, yeah? Big, and they used to put things on it, like ladies, like ladies' knickers and towels from the, from the hospitals and all that, yeah? And his, that was his weapon. That knitting needle, that needle, sorry, that needle, uh, the, uh, the the safety pin, yeah, but the big needle bit that comes out of it, you know what I mean? That was his safety pin. He'd sharpen it up, he'd keep one, sharpen it up, and he'd pick it up when he wanted to hide it, and he'd pick it up when he wants to pick it up, and he'd, he used to stab, 
so many Indians when I was in my YP. It's unbelievable. When he was in that laundry, he used to stab them. I've seen him stab so many Indians. And he was a young boy that they wouldn't put into a, a little prison. They put him into a YP because he was too violent, yeah? He'd already killed that woman, smashed that woman to pieces on, over a burial with his dad. He was doing HMP, this young boy, Pat Allen, but he was complete out and out schizophrenic psychopath, I swear, yeah? And then uh, the other weapons I see, right, was in the metal shop. They used to make, they used to make blades, uh, right? They used to make blades out of, out of copper, copper cable, yeah? They used to make these blades, they used to smash them with the hammer, yeah? And wrap them up tight in, in the vice and do it like a blade, like a, they'd smash it in pieces and do it like a blade and put a big handle, like a wooden handle. Let me tell you something, bad weapons in, in my YP. <laughs> They're crazy. They was listen. I don't use as I said before. I don't use weapons. But these fucking things would kill you, Stone Dead. I've seen more boys in there get stabbed with copper knives than enough, mate. Get stabbed up. I mean, stab and used to hide them, hide them in the factory. Yeah. Some you should take them out. I don't know how to get them out. They got them out though. Throw them through the window. Uh, get the red band, the blue band. They come down, pick them up sell them to them because they picked them up and all that, yeah. But when I was on the other other side, F and G wing, they used to have um, the, what they call it, the uh, the bumper, yeah. They used to have the bumper and they used to snap the end of the bumper and snap them up, yeah, and sharpen the wood. And pull it out, pull it out bits at a peak, bits of wood at a time and sharpen it up and use them those blades. When they done, when they done, um, what she called it, Bardo, uh, the guy that made a uh, cigarette, um, sorry, tobacco pouches out of women's breasts. Yeah, he cut their breast off and make uh, tobacco pouches out of them. When they done Pardo, yeah, in my wing, G, F wing was a short term, G wing was a long term, where Pardo was, Pardo was up the screws' asses like it's going out of fashion. He looked, he looked 40. 50, but really, he was 21, 19, 18, 19, 20, but he looked old. He had grey hair, bald head, look, just looked what he was, uh, a rapist, paedophile, whatever he was, he just looked at you. And I remember the, I remember the Brummy boys, the Brummies, they was doing, they was all doing ATMP, big sentences, yeah, from Birmingham. Uh, I remember them saying they was going to do him bad because he was right, he was right round the screws like he was going out of fashion. He was, there's one screw there, but I forget his name now. Uh, what was his name? Barraclough. Mr. Barraclough. He was right round Mr. Barraclough. He was going in there, the door was getting shut. He was doing all sorts of things with Barraclough. Or Barraclough was doing all sorts of things to him. Um, you know, and these, these, uh, these boys, uh, the, the YP boys, these Borsa boys, what was on G wing, didn't see it going on because it was on a different wing. But 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 that so Pardo used to go back to the wing, you know, dinner times, and night times, and sleep. Yeah, obviously a bit of association, an association place where you play you played snooker. The times I've seen, you see scum, where he puts all in balls in a, in, a, in a sock, and he has a, and he does them with. Smashed them. With, I've seen so many fights in my YP where they'd been playing snooker. You know, big, they had a smash, massive grab of snooker table. That was a woman's prison, and they had a great smashing grab of uh, a snooker table in there. And I've seen so many fights where people have picked the balls up, just picked them up, not even put them in socks, just picked them up and whack people across the head of them, you know what I mean? I swear, pick up the big, it was cute, crash. You know, but when they done Pardo, that Pardo kid, they done him with his copper blades, his, uh, his knives, they smash them, they, they don't know how to do it, they get the copper, they smash it hard, and it's, they make it like solid like a blade, and they wrap them up with this stuff, you know, this uh, stuff that goes around the copper tube, the copper stuff, and they wrap it around there, like cable, you know, and they wrap it around there, and it's a blade, proper blade, mate, you won't really, you won't really be stabbed with that, you know what I mean, they're about, seven inches long, 
shot. They've made a smash of a piece of bet. These people who've done it were nutcases. They done Bardo, Pardo bad. They smashed him bad. Uh, and they all got shipped out. I'm seeing them all get shipped out, but the kid deserved it. You know, he was raping women and done all these things to women, cutting their breasts off. Uh, and I've seen some really bad things in my YP. People get really, really hurt, up and people get whacked across here with fucking big weights, you know, the bars, uh, the weights. Uh, never, never see it in my, in my powerlifting team, in my powerlifting uh, gym. Uh, everyone who was there was very close to each other. We all trained, we always wanted to get, we become the best lifters in, in, uh, in southern area in, in the prisons. We was the, we was the, the ones. We beat Parker, so Parker had a big Olympic lifter in there. I mean, even beat him, yeah. It was down to Gary, uh, what's his name? It's Gary fella that come from Bournemouth or Portsmouth, Portsmouth, Gary, big Gary. Uh, and this other black guy, Ted Wayne. Ted, I mean, I wonder if there's anybody know Ted Wayne. Ted Wayne was powerful, man. Little half guys guy, big legs, powerful. I was very powerful. Well, I, I done a 795 deadlift. Yeah, 795 pound deadlift. Uh, I was about 18, 19. Yeah, man. And, but as I say, but as dangerous as prisons are, are go, Ellsbury was really dangerous, especially things from the metal shop. I'm surprised um, they never they never uh, done more security in that, in that shop because there were so many people who got stabbed up with, with these uh, these copper blades, and then and then from there where you go you go to the big prisons, your big prisons uh, the tools they use there in the big prisons is usually bed legs, bed legs chairs. Um, you don't, I've not seen, because when I was, all them, now, I think now and again you still get the, uh, you still get the metal, the metal knife, the metal fork, the metal spoon. As I say, I've seen some damage, a lot of damage done with that, and that's why they stopped it. Um, in all the prisons that I went to, and my YPs, and my ball store, and eventually it all stopped, yeah, because the amount of people that got really, really plunged up, and a lot of people got killed for, for over that, yeah. But anyway, um, it's just a little video. There is more to it. There is a lot more people that, that, that I see get stabbed up, mate, in my YP, stabbed up in my big prison. I mean, listen, when you've got people like Togi Ludlow, right, and there's a lot of things said about Togi, but don't worry about that, mate. In prison, Togi was a bad man, dangerous man. You know, and if anything, he wanted anything done, he had a little crew. And they'd go and do it. When they went on the march, mate, you knew that someone was going. They would go on the march and they'd get proper blades, proper made blades from the metal shop or the wood shop. Mostly I've seen blades come out of the wood shop that are proper blades. You know, like wooden knives that come out of there, mate, and they stab you to death in them. I've seen Togi do some terrible things uh, when they go on the march four or five of them and you know he's my mate I mean it was my mate I went out in the street you know but in the end of the day he went super grass and that's it yeah but I've never seen it uh, I've known Togi all my life Togi's never grasped me up for anything and we've done things together me and him he's never grasped me up so I can't say that he did or whatever yeah he did things to other people I don't really know yeah but there is big rumours that he did uh, there are people out there people out there now They've just come out of prison, uh, you know, that says he did. Uh, but, you know, um, he never done me no harm. He never done me no harm. Uh, doesn't mean to say he's not a grass, but he never done me no harm. There's a few people he never done Mark, Stevie Potters and all them people. He never done. Anyway, but just saying that when he when he went in the march, I mean, even in Chelmsford prison, Togi, um, David Potter and all that little, uh, Terry Millman, and Lou Swallow and all that little lot. And uh, when they went on the move, and Mickey Blackmore, and you know, not, I didn't see Roy Atkins so much. Roy Atkins was a short term, he was on the other side. But yeah, Mickey Blackmore, Togi Ludlow, Dave Potter, uh, uh, there was about Terry Millman, there was about four or five of them. 
And when they weren't on the move, they, you had to be, you had to watch your back, you know what I mean? You think, where are they going now, you know? And some of them get plunged up. But you never got a lot of people grasp, you never see a lot of people grasping each other up. They just accept it. You know, get plunged up in the arse, their leg, you know, and, and the arm, you know, the shoulder, never in the face. And you got cut across the face, it's somewhere where it could be hid, you know what I mean? Some, some of them got cut and they had to hide it, you know, but it was for a vendetta, where they owed money for a po po poker play, po playing poker, or they got too leery, uh, they owed people for smoke, for, for cannabis, for opiates and black and shit like that. A lot of that got in there, you know what I mean? So uh, they, 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 um, that's pay, pay for puff and all that in, in Johnson's. Not so much in the other prisons, but Johnson prison, there was a lot of stuff went in there, a puff in it, and um, people didn't want to pay the debt, get out of their nut, didn't want to pay the debt and have to pay the consequences. So Togi was, because Togi was one of the ones that uh, provided it, and uh, Alan Dixon sometimes would, would you know, we'd, we'd get it in, other people would get it in, but, you know, and there would be murders if people didn't pay up. Ronnie Bender, Ronnie Bender, he could get anything that he wanted. Ronnie Bender could get anything that he wanted. I've never seen Ronnie Bender cause any problems. I've never seen Ronnie Bender cause any problems to anybody, yeah? He would give, he'd give you anything that you wanted, he would give you. Without anything, we pay you back and all that kind. He would just give you. If he give you, he give you. He wouldn't want return. You know, come on, how about you? He, but there was some in there that when they when they give it and they had to get their money back, they got all the Togi, Terry Millman, Lou Swallow, uh, David Potter, and other people. David Potter and all the other people. There's people saying, yeah, but there was only they couldn't do nothing. But listen. When you've got Mickey Blackmore as well, when you've got them people, or schizophrenic psychopaths who actually hit people on the street, yeah, you know, uh, they don't really care. They don't really care. Even if they can't fight, you're going to go one way or the other. You will get stabbed up. If there's four or five on you, mate, you ain't got no chance. Just stab you, stab you, stab you, stab you, and just walk away and leave you. But one thing about Chelsea Prison, what I liked, there was no grass in there. You don't see many people, well, you don't see any people really get grasped up in there for stabbings and cuttings. One of the worst in there was my mate Peter Lyons. Yeah, Peter Lyons, um, he stabbed quite a few people, Peter. He had a big, um, Peter had a big, uh, a big knife, big knife, Peter. Uh, he sharpened it up to a, a right bad point, you know. He got it out of the kitchen. I don't know he got it out of the kitchen, but he did. Um, and I've seen him few stab a few people up, Peter. He was quite wicked, Peter Lyons, and but he was a big guy too. What, 19 stone, he used to play rugby with me. He was prop with me, second row with me. He was a powerful guy that could have a fight, but more so have a fight, he was very dangerous. And he would just stab you up, mate. He would stab you up, he wouldn't think nothing of it, Peter. Whereas I wouldn't, me and him fell out one day over some milk, funny. In my cell, I had the big weight that Tony Lawrence gave me. And he comes around, he come rushing around the corner because I nicked his milk over, over, over a plastic mug of milk that I took from behind the hot plate, yeah? Uh, behind the coppers. He wanted to kill me for, for a big plastic mug of milk. He come rushing around the corner like a lunatic. Because he shouted across the landing. He was opposite me. He shouted across the landing, all right? Where's my fucking milk? All right? And I said, There it is. I've drunk it. <laughs> Mate, he came round the corner, around the landing, with a big thing to do me. And I picked up my weight. I said, Come on, what can I do with the weight? <laughs> I didn't chuck it at him. But anyway, we laughed about it. We thought it was funny. I tell you, it was dangerous. I've seen him stab a few people and mean it. And when I say mean it, stab them to really hurt them was Mickey Green. And everybody thought Mickey Green was a, 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 a gentleman, a weak man. Mickey Green was a dangerous man. 
Mickey Green was a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous man. I've seen him stand. And the worst one was him, Frankie Fraser. Frank, Frankie Fraser, mate, was uh, very dangerous. He didn't care, mate. He was, uh, what, five foot six, five foot seven. But really, he should have been eight foot tall because Frank was a very dangerous man. Um, he didn't really care. He would stab you up bad. He would stab you up bad. And there was more people in, I mean, Tony Lawrence. Uh, Tony Lawrence, I mean, come in, he'd been shot six times in the head or all that, in the, in the body. Uh, they're just mad, don't they? You know what I mean? They're just mad anyway. But he was, Tony Lawrence was a, a dangerous man. Tony Lawrence always had plenty of blades around him. I had a, I had a big, uh, I had a standing knife in my cell, a standing knife and two big, uh, uh, what's the name's nails that are sharpened up in, in bits of wood <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I don't even use tools but I still had them in my cell you know what I mean just, you know, you don't, don't know it's mad in there everybody had something in their cell and as I say you know when you had a fight in, in them sort of places uh, you get people would come to you with things like their blades and I've seen so many people get stabbed up and cut up in prison and people, you've got to remember that when you go in there in prison, you ain't got a clue who you're going to meet in there. You don't know even names who they are. But they come from their own little plot. And these people are mad, schizos. And you don't even know who they are. I bet they will stab you up. I mean, all jokes aside, you've got Yammy. You've got Yammy B TV. You know, Yami is a very, very dangerous man. Yami would cut you up, slice you up and put you in a meat pie. Yami. You know, I have heard a lot about Yami. You know, we and him have a little banter here and there, but I have heard a lot about Yami. Yami was very dangerous. He would cut you up, eyes are winking. That's why he never really got out, Yami, because he was always causing that sort of problem, cutting people up. In prison, he was bad at it, you know what I mean? So, you know, I, I, that I know, that I know that he was very dangerous. He would cut you up, mate. And, you know, and he would be in with proper people, you know, and he had people that got themselves in debt. The biggest thing that ever happened in prison was a thing called drugs. Uh, when drugs got in prison really bad and people are taking it and they can't afford to pay, pay the debt, that's when they get cut up. You know, when they, when they get cut up really bad. And Yami cut a few people bad. He cut people up bad. That was his job, and he done it, yeah. Um, if you didn't pay him, he got cut up. And there was quite a lot. You haven't got to be, you haven't got to be six foot six, 20 stone to, to be a dangerous man in prison because the littlest man in prison can stab and kill you in there. That's why it really... You've got to respect everybody because there's people in there you might think of nothing, but they will stab you up, eyes are winking, or they would do it now. It's worse because you've got the thing called hot water and sugar because everybody's got kettles. In my times, there was no kettles, so people made blades up and things like that and cut you up, you know, and piece of wood and all that, and sharp and woods up and stab you up, you know. None of this, um, but I have seen... Uh, when Tom Lashley, Tom Lashley, the rapist, yeah, um, I used to train with Tom. I didn't believe that what he did, but anyway, um, he got done for that, uh, killing that um, air hostess of Shepherd's Bush, didn't he? When he kidnapped her from the, air, the, from the uh, bus stop. But when they got it, hold of Tom, when they got hold of Tommy that, in prison, Tom Lashley, uh, the people that done it, they cut him with a, a bar of soap, uh, in a in a pineapple tin with a pineapple lid. They put it in a bar of soap or two bars of soap and they, they cut them down the face and the cut was about an inch wide. He never had it stitched up. It was still it was still there to the day I left, yeah. The day when I left uh, Albany and I see him, yeah. Uh, but he's been he's been uh, bashed up a few times. But I will give it no matter what he was um, he never gassed anybody up. He never got anybody nicked for what they did. Uh, even though, even though the two that did it to him, 
he nearly killed. He nearly killed them. You know what I mean? He, he just ripped them to pieces like a, a, like a gorilla. It's a big man chop. And he ripped them, ripped, ripped the arms and shoulders, ripped, ripped them up, you know. I think he snapped their arms, snapped their legs and all that, you know, after they'd done that to him. But I've seen some people in there get really, really cut. And well, look at me, I've done lots of damage in prison myself, yeah, and I'm not even a tall man. But I, to, sometimes to defend yourself, you've got to hit people with something, you know, not stab them, I wouldn't ever stab them, but I'll hit them with something, you know. And I've seen people um, in the showers uh, get stabbed up, Togi Ludlow, I've seen him stab many people up in the showers. I've seen people get stabbed, I've seen Billy McGee, uh, the gay guy, guy that stabbed George Cockle to death with a chisel. 16, 14, 16 times she stabbed him with a chisel in the woodmill. And But I will see, see Billy McGee, Mary, stab people in the, in the showers. When she's gone in the showers and they've come, come in there uh, to take liberties and she's, she's gone in there with a, a pen, with a pen and stabbed them up with a pen, stabbed them up big time with a pen. Yeah, it doesn't matter because she's a gay, it's not happened. You know, I see more gays in there uh, that would kill you with a flinch, would kill you, you know, people think, oh, they're gay, but you've got to remember, they're women, they got women's, they got women's, uh, they're like women, but they've got men's strength. You know what I mean? They've got the women in them, but they've got the men's strength, so the men's power in, in them, so, you're thinking you're going to go in there and bash them and uh, I'll get take your wicked ways with them and you come out plunged up with a pen. And that's what happened Billy McGee. She stabbed more people than the Nuff Bill, you know. And Janice, I see Janice, um, I should have told this one before, I see Janice, right. Uh, she was um, giving the PO in, uh, in, in Albany a blowjob. In the office, and she went in, and some guys went in court, and they was taking the Mickey out of her. Right, the PO just shrugged it off as if it was a joke, as if it never happened, you know. Um, the guys took was shouting about a bit. The guys got the sack actually, um, but as when the world's got the sack, they got really obliged by Janice. Uh, Janice picked up a paddle from the coppers, and she smashed them. Some bits. I mean, she opened them up, their heads up, just smashed them. But you're gonna get neat. They lost their job for causing a, causing like a, a, a riot in the, in the in the kitchen. They ain't can't say nothing about the P.O. was doing that. They're gonna get killed, don't they? But the screws are gonna kill them. So they kept their mouth shut. But that Janice, uh, she come out of the, she come out walked walked over to the coppers. These two kids was in on the veg on the veg doing the veg work, and then she went in there and smashed them to pieces. And don't forget, these kids that are doing the veg, right, have got knives. They're cutting potatoes up and the cabbage up, so they got knives. She went in there, mate, didn't care, and smashed them with a pad with a paddle from from the copper. Yeah, smashed them to pieces. <laughs> yeah, and. Um, um, I'm off. Listen, you can go on and on and on about what you're seeing in prison, people getting cut up, you know, people screaming and shouting, and they go in the morning and they've been plunged up really bad, you know. But as I said, Chelsea Prison, I see lots of it in Chelsea Prison, on my wing, people getting plunged up. I've never seen anybody gross anybody up. I've never seen it. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. The, the prison was the, was the best prison you could ever possibly be in. Screws was, screws was not screws comparison. They didn't really give a fuck as such. They didn't, they didn't care. Sorry, swearing. They didn't really, really care about what they did. They just, banged, as long as they banged up you up at night time, that's all they was worried about. You know what I mean? You know, people, listen, when you're walking about, with big knives, um, having dinners, having dinners on the wing, on the ones, on the ground floor, four or five tables put together, and everybody's eating dinner with, pl with knives, not plastic knives, with, <laughs> with knives from Winnie Bender. Yeah, man. Ugh. 
the nick was the nick was like a hotel. You know, you didn't mind banging up. You didn't mind because you knew you know, tomorrow something's going to happen and something good. Or it's never, never seen really anything bad happen in there. Only when they done that to Chris Wilkinson, when they done him, uh, they when they chucked, chucked him out and he got killed. Uh, they killed in a book called Street uh, Fighting for Your Life. Yeah, now you must get that book called Fighting for Your Life, uh, where they killed George Cockle. Uh, they just killed him, mate. All you want to do is see his mum. And uh, they just killed him, and it's a shame. I mean, it's, this happens, you know. In you know, but as I said, in my times, in my times, in the early days, uh, screws were all ex MPs, very bad people. If there's people out there, same age as me or a little bit older than me, who have done uh, the places that I'm talking about, and have been to them places I'm talking about, and seen these screws in black, black uh, uniforms with a black cap and a blue shirt. Tell me what they were like. They were bouncers, mate. They would have a fight, they would come in your cell, take the hat off and have a fight with you, fisty cuffs. Yeah, and if you and if you beat them, they'd walk out of the cell, put a hat on, but they'd come back later on four or five end. <laughs> but the screws would have a fight with you. Yeah, anyway, this is Bang Bang Rail. Please press the like button and subscribe. And nice one, yeah. I've got big stories about all this, what went on in prison, but it's going to be later. Yeah, bye-bye.